Hi everyone, I'm Kristen, the Cross Stitching Runner, and welcome to my channel. I want to say a big hello and welcome to all new and returning subscribers. And if by chance you've stumbled across this channel, this channel is all about cross stitch with a bit of life stuff thrown in between. So I'm recording this on Monday the 18th of April, which happens to be uh, Easter Monday here in Australia. And it has been a pretty good weekend um, for, for Easter and it's, I've recorded this episode several times so I'm really hoping that I haven't got forgotten too much more in terms of what I want to say to everyone here and it's, it's going to be all good. Lots of chocolate, lots of eating, a bit of travel and all the rest has been going on and thankfully a lot of stitching. So if by chance you've been able to watch my previous episode um, and if especially if you, you made it to the end and all, well done because that was a, a pretty long episode, a, a lot longer than I had anticipated it to being and thank you, <laughs> especially uh, to the new subscribers who decided that it was worthwhile to, to see uh, see more new episodes and such that I'd be releasing so so thank you very much for persevering so a lot of the stitching that I've been up to has been connected to uh, the challenge that I well, a few challenges that I'm setting for myself for, uh, for a few months for this year uh, to try and get through a few few whips and to make things just a little bit different for me so after the the filming of my last episode i needed a little bit of a break from cross stitching and uh, i guess rethink how i was going to do that stitching so i decided that i wanted to start creating another um, project bag to, to store some more of my projects and patterns and such and this one is actually a little bit different where i've wanted to uh, start it off, off as like a bit of a patchwork uh, kind of setup. So this is just a little bit of a hint of what it will look like and I'm hoping it'll, actually not rephrase, I know it will work out okay. I do need to um, cut some more fabric and, and add some extra um, edges around it so it will fit the, the size projects that, that I want in there. So I think I have done something similar to this um, a good 20 odd years ago when I did a patchwork quilt in high school and I did forget just how tedious it can be and time consuming to, to cut some of these squares but it was it's definitely been well worth it and I think it also reminded me how much um, importance there is for making sure all the squares are the same size so again it, it's it's um, a good practice and a good reminder for myself for all future endeavors that I do with um, the stitching so once I recovered from from doing a bit of the patchwork and ironing and, and all the rest I was able to to finally confirm in my mind that uh, with the way I was going to do my stitching for the, the rest of the football season. Um, so I'm doing my challenges based upon uh, the Australian football rules or the uh, yeah A A A AFL, <laughs> um, where I'm attributing projects to the teams uh, that are part of the AFL and the, the challenges that I'm doing for myself I've, I think I've hit that sweet spot. So I know that for a few months, or gosh, not months, weeks, my apologies, weeks. Um, over the last few weeks, I've tried a few different ways of how I was going to do the stitching. And I've settled upon just focusing on the projects that I've attributed to the teams and just focus on the ones where the team has won. So for example, the first project I want to show you is a trio of dogs, or I also have dubbed uh, the three labs, the three Labradors. So this is a 
kit that I've had in my collection for, for a little while and it's an I guess it's a collaboration between Anka and Zweigart in terms of the Anka Threads Zweigart fabric and it's a design or production by um, Luca S um, and I think the, the kit has come from Moldova so I've let's say for example I've attributed this project to a team called the Western Bulldogs and over the last couple of rounds since we last caught up the Western Bulldogs have um, won a couple of games and uh, they I've been able to get a total of 210 stitches in so I've uh, put for example 139 stitches into this project and then um, if I'm not working on this project for the Western Bulldogs I'm working on another one called a dictionary of dogs so this is a Bothy Threads kit um, and this is I guess a close-up of how to look so I've done um, a total of 71 stitches on this project. So just coming back to a trio of dogs, um, I'm using all of the, the cord four threads and um, stitching on the, the fabric that it came in. And I'm focusing on filling in the chocolate Labrador's face and just filling in the gaps a bit and um, starting to come down underneath the, his chin. Um, so it's, coming along quite well. It looks like this could be um, roughly 14 count um, Zweigart and it's the first fabric that I have stitched on that is the, the gridded, gridded fabric and I haven't fully appreciated the, the grids that were on it until I started stitching and realising that the grids are there for a reason. So that's part of why I've got um, Thankfully you don't see it too much in the, the light, but I've got some pencil markings on the fabric from when I was trying to I guess, figure out where I was going to, to start the project. So with, with this particular project, um, there will potentially be some more stitching to come because we've got, actually, no, I take that back. I think Western Bulldogs have already played in round five and that's where no I'm all caught up for this is where I'm shocking myself a little bit so my apologies for jumping around so much what um what I've done is I've I'm all caught up with my stitching from rounds three and four and what helped a lot especially in round four was that was when I made that um, that final decision just to focus on the projects that are associated with teams who have won rather than focusing on all of the projects and working on them regardless of whether the team has won or lost their game and that has just made the world a difference with taking a load of time and stress and pressure off the stitching and uh, continuing to make it fun for me so with that in mind, I am very much caught up on my stitching for Trio of Dogs and a Dictionary of Dogs. So just to actually show you where I'm up to with a Dictionary of Dogs, um, I've been focusing mostly on the, um, the dogfish area. So you'll see that I've, uh, for the 71 stitches, I've stitched on the, I guess the, the yellow where we start to see the, the tail and a bit of the head of, um, of the goldfish or the dogfish as the, the pattern calls it. So, so that's coming along really nicely and I've really enjoyed working on the variegated thread um, for the, the fish bowl. So I still have a little bit more of the variegated thread to go um, for that but I have no doubt that I'm going to have leftovers in terms of leftover threads for that project. So I'll have to figure out how I can incorporate the variegated thread in some other projects. And it might mean that I need to maybe design 
a project perhaps connected with some of these leftover threads. I'll have to wait and see. Okay, so the next project I have to share with you that has, has seen a little bit of love is the Water Tiger 2. So this one is um, one of my oldest projects and I'd have to say I, I started this well over 10 years ago. So it could be perhaps 15 years ago, 15 or a bit more. Um, I'm not sure exactly. The copyright on this project is 2004. It's designed by Diana Lair and the illustration is, or the artwork, is by J.W. Baker. So that's where I'm, I'm assuming that it, it is older than the 15 years. Um, I'm, I'm not sure exactly when I purchased it. But this one I'm attributing to a team called the Richmond Tigers. And this is where I'm up to at the moment. And please bear in mind that I haven't actually done a huge amount on the project. Um, I have very much been focusing on the white that we see here. Um, so when I picked up this project, uh, I had already done uh, what we see here at the moment. I, wrote, I had already done um, a fair bit and I just fell out of love with the the project. So with Water Tiger, um, I have been able to get, with Water Tiger, I've done 183 stitches, give or take. Um, so I have found with some projects, I'll really get into that groove of stitching and um, I'll surpass the 183 stitches, for example. And you know, You'll see that when I come up with some of the, the other projects as well, where um, especially if I've been using Pattern Keeper or the stitches have been spread over several squares, I'll then recount them and realise that I've done more than what I needed to or uh, whichever. So, so this one's going to be okay. Um, from a distance, it's, it's looking pretty cool. And this one, I'm going to do a, an alteration to it where I'm intentionally leaving the eyes to the end because I'm going to need to take a bit of care with them. And because I'm stitching this project for my best friend's 40th, which will be next year in October, she really loves tigers with blue eyes. So I'll need to make us make some adjustments to the pattern to... I guess assign certain shades of blue or yeah tones of blue to to the eyes to still give them that that shading that the um that the final picture um has so yeah we'll wait and see hopefully hopefully it all works out okay so the next project that i have to share with you is a bookmark that i've purchased from um oz stitch so Ozstitch is an Australian based company based up in Queensland uh, they're an online business and they are fantastic. Um, they, they actually have been really quick with being able to um, send through any threads that I've purchased online and um, this is where I got um, the Hawthorne bookmark um, that I talked about a couple of weeks ago. So with the Hawthorne bookmark, um, I've just done a solitary 73 stitches on it and I'm stitching this. So this is, I guess, the black and white edition of what the project will look like. And this is, I guess, what I've done so far. Uh, so I'm stitching it on 14 count um, blue Ada, And I guess it's just a, a scrap of fabric that I've had in my stash is it's an off cut and so I'm using some of the core four colors um, they're all DNC threads and I am using um, one of the variegated DMC threads that are very much um, associated with the team colors called or for Hawthorne so um, the rest of the the letters that we see on the pattern I'll stitch all of those in the DMC variegated thread. So hopefully, hopefully Hawthorne can start winning a few more games. So I'll be able to get a bit 
a bit more work done on it. Um, worst case scenario is in terms of the amount of work that needs to go into the project, it may just be um, a weekend project or an overnight um, project because it, it won't take long for me to get the, um, the letters done. So um, I'll definitely keep it as a bookmark and um, yeah, I'm not quite sure if I'll use it as a bookmark or uh, do something else with it, but um, yeah, we'll wait and see. <laughs> it's all good. Okay. So the next project that I've worked on is one of my own designs. Um, so I've worked on black and white rolled up daisy. So this is available for purchase on the Hot Cross Stitching website. Um, it's a PDF download and it's fully compatible with Pattern Keeper. And it is something where I wouldn't be able to stitch without um, without Pattern Keeper, uh, largely because of the way Pattern Keeper is. Uh, I I don't know. It it would be a lot more challenging for me to work on any of my full coverage projects without the app because uh, I love the way the the app is set up and I love that I can just select a particular um, symbol in the chart and it will tell me straight away what that um, what that color is connected to or what that symbol is connected to so yeah I, I just I love the app and so with this particular project um, I'm attributing it to a team called the mental blank <laughs> I am attributing it to two teams so I'm attributing it to the Adelaide Crows and the Collingwood Magpies. So the Collingwood Magpies, their team colours are black and white. And with the Adelaide Crows, um, the, um, the crow here in Australia is a black bird. And their team colours are yellow or gold, uh, blue and red. So that's where I've switched things around every so often for the Adelaide Crows, where sometimes I'll attribute them to another project that you'll see soon, or if I really want some love done to black and white rolled up daisy, I'll attribute them to, um, to the project. So this is where I'm at so far. Um, I'm stitching this on 18 count Ada. And from a distance, this is looking really good. It is awesome. So this is all DMC threads and I'm stitching it two threads over one fabric square. And I have stitched so far for rounds three and four. I have stitched 288 stitches. So I think I've I feel like I think I've done more than the 288 um, and I, I really want to get some more done for it as well and this is going to look awesome when it's done I'm really really looking forward to to spending more time with this project and, and getting getting it done so the next one I've worked on is called fight like a girl and it's designed by Tanya Amity and the illustration is by Elena Zhnidkova and there's about three teams that have got attributed to this project. So with Fight Like a Girl I've got the Brisbane Lions, the Melbourne Demons and the Carlton Blues. So with the Brisbane Lions um, they're connected to this project because of the lion from The Lion, The Witch and The Wardrobe. The Hawthorne Demons, their team colours are navy blue and red. So I'm actually, there's quite a few blues in this project, but you'll soon see that I'm stitching this on the navy blue fabric. And there's also some reds in here as well that also help with um, the Hawthorne, not Hawthorne, the Melbourne Demons. And in terms of Carlton, um, their team colours are blue and white. So, okay, and you can see that there's quite a lot of blue and white in this project. 
so with this project because of the three teams that are connected to the project and at least one of them have won um, some of their games I have stitched a total of 397 stitches and I still have another 218 to stitch so this is where I'm up to at the moment and yeah this this is yeah it's going to be very cool when it's done and I'm stitching this on 18 count um, navy blue and it feels like Ada just because of the, the stiffness that that's connected to it and the the project has got some blended threads and some of it is also half stitch so I'll see if I can bring this in a little bit so you can see like the background near where Alice is sitting down having her cup of tea um, that background is half stitch and I love that Pattern Keeper have updated the app to enable um, this project to be incorporated in it and I can, can use the app to stitch this. So before I had printed out the pattern and um, yeah, it's, it's one of those challenges where because it's a full coverage project, it's spread over several pages that I've, I always hate having to go go back to the key to then figure out what symbol is connected to what colour and then find that colour and then remember what, what symbol am I stitching on again? So that's why I love Pattern Keeper so much and I've tried quite a few different ways of working for the full coverage projects that um, are spread across several pages um, that are printed patterns and um, yeah I if I really really love a project I will use a printed um, a printed pattern if it can't be put into pattern keeper but it's almost like after experiencing pattern keeper I, I don't want to go back to the old way of doing things um, so see so yeah, that that's why I'm just in love with with that particular app so the next project I have and this one always always brings a smile to my face because um, it it makes me happy and um, it's a project where my boyfriend has just got he's he's got my back on this one um, in the sense that he loves this project as well he, he likes these flowers and um, so this is Dewdrop Daisy and it's um, available on the Hot Cross Stitching website and it's also fully Pattern Keeper compatible. Um, it's a PDF download and um, I just love the colours in this project as well and it is coming to life so much and I'm attributing this particular project to um, the AFL challenge that I've got for myself as well as the Full Coverage Fanatics um, uh, Facebook group as well. So the AFL team that I'm attributing this project to is the Fremantle Dockers. Their team colours are predominantly purple and white. So I'm stitching this on purple fabric and there, there are some purples in this flower as well. And this is where I'm up to at the moment and I'll just bring this in. So I've got a pretty bit, got a lot done. So I'm focusing on, let's see, I'll get this folded up a bit more again. So I am focusing on um, a lot of the petals on the, the side here and it's, it's come along really nicely. I, I'm using all DMC threads and this I think is being stitched on, I think it's 28 count linen. Um, it's, I, I dyed this purple fabric myself. I th think it had previously been like an off-white or a, a very light coloured fabric nonetheless. And um, so I'm stitching it two over two. Yeah, two over two. So it means that I'm not going to have enough fabric to, to get all of the petals in down the bottom. 
but there'll be enough where you can definitely get an idea of what the project will look like and I mean I'm model it's I'm model stitching it so the fact that it's not going to get all of the petals in that's okay that's on me um, but it's going to be enough for you to see just how beautiful and how amazing this project is and ideally I would love to be able to enter this project into um, like a stitch a stitching show or a royal show or something like that um, I know that I'd need to go over it in like with a fine tooth comb to to fix up some of this the crosses so they look a lot more even and neater and, and such but I'll cross that I will cross that bridge when I get to it um, so with this particular project I have put over the last couple of weeks I'm a little uncertain on the exact number but I've put at least 1236 stitches into this so the Fremantle Dockers they um, let's see with some of their games they have done what have they done they've done 102 points in round three they then did um, a score of 88 points in round four and I'm not sure if they're playing this round or they they might have lost um, so that's where some of those stitches have come in and so I also mentioned the full coverage fanatics um, Facebook group so my other aim with this project is to get 22,000 stitches done um, through throughout the year of 2022 so this project has a total of a touch over 60,000 stitches in it and considering that um, my aim is to get a minimum of 64 stitches in per day to reach that minimum of 22,000 stitches by the end of the calendar year I will no doubt get this done especially with the help of the, the AFL and how I'm, I'm doing my challenge with the, the stitching and such. So it, it'll be all right where I know I won't get the total um, 60,000 done in terms of the completed project because I will be cutting off um, about 20% of it. So I think from about here down, um, I'll be cutting off a bit because I just won't have the fabric available to do it so we'll get there it'll be all right because I still want to have um, a couple of inches um, or about five centimeters of fabric between the, the project and the end of the fabric just to help with um, the framing and that kind of thing and I probably could um, attach some fabric to the the end here so that way I can actually stitch a lot closer to the edge than what I normally would. So I'll, I'll wait and see how things go. Um, as the as the petals form a bit more, I'll um, go through my stash and, and add some extra fabric where I can. So with that in mind, moving on, we have a mini stitch in time. So this is a heaven and earth design. Um, the artwork is by Amy Stewart and even though it doesn't have quite all of the true colours in the picture there because of the printer and such, um, I've attributed this project to the AFL team called the GWS Giants and majority of their team colours are connected to like a, an orange, orangey brown kind of colour. So I've started doing some stitching in the autumn section of the bookshelf and um, it's coming along really, really nicely. So I've been able to get um, a bit over 246 stitches in it. Um, so I've done quite a lot of that as part of um, catching up from previous rounds. And in round three, I believe it was, Yes, round three, uh, GWS scored 83 points. 
I can't remember if they won that game or if they lost it. They are struggling a bit this season. So that said, um, I think they lost their round four game. And I have a feeling they haven't won in round five either. So I'll have to go back and double check my scores and who's doing what, when, where. Because we are towards at the very end of round five. So I haven't updated my scores too much yet for, for this particular round. Um, that's it. I have done a lot of this stitching um, when I've been participating in um, some training sessions or uh, there we go, that's better. Um, or there's been a, a branch meeting where I've needed to listen to what's going on rather than anything else. And I love stitching on this easy grid fabric. Um, this is I think it's 25 count easy grid I'm stitching one over one using all of the DMC threads and it, it is really cool I'm really glad that I'm doing this because I've seen so many beautiful full coverage projects that people have been doing that are based on Amy Stewart's artwork and especially like even the, the max color ones they are awesome they are beautiful and they give me hope, uh, like in terms of the some of the sizes of these full coverage projects, especially the Max Colors ones, where they are like 999 <laughs> stitches long by 700 and, and something or other high. They give me hope because of some of the designs that I'm working on and f knowing who my market is. But I'll get to that later. So the next project I've been working on for the last couple of weeks is um, an Aussie designer called Handlebar Stitcher. So this is a pattern that's in conjunction with the Cottage Garden threads. It's called Biscorn Rue, and in the picture in the here, the cover picture, you can see the the four colours that are from Cottage Garden threads that make up this particular um, Biscornu. And so I'm attributing this particular project to three teams. So I'm attributing it to, um, okay, well here's a progress so far. Oh. Okay, so it is a bit bright and some of the yellows, um, there we go, now it's focused. Okay, so the red border that we see here, it's backstitch, and the colour is a variegated red that is connected to the Essendon Bombers, and their team colours are black and red. And in terms of the yellows that we see here, they're connected to a team called the Gold Coast Suns, and then the Biscorn Roo, the actual kangaroo part, is associated with the North Melbourne kangaroos. So it's all coming together. I'm stitching this on 18 count Ada and it's some Ada that I've had in my stash for ages and I dyed it yellow and then I used these Kayser Craft um, sprays. Um, two different greens, one's an olive green and another one's like a, um, like a lime green or something like that. And both of them have got a bit of glitter in them. And I, I do recognise that the, the yellows on the fabric, that they do blend in. And I'm not, I'm not worried about it though, because I know that this is the, what I'm stitching at the moment. There we go. So what I'm stitching on at the moment is the base of the, the Biscornu. So we're, we're only going to see bits of this particular base anyway. So... It's going to be all right it's all good and i'm really enjoying how this is this is coming together and i really really enjoy using the um the cottage garden threads um, a lot of it's to do with the colors um and it's also a lot to do with their packaging of their threads so if by chance you've not used cottage garden threads before Annoyingly, I don't have any on hand at the moment, but 
they've specially put together their um, threads so you don't actually have to take it off the actual packaging it comes in um, they've got instructions on the back of their their packaging for the threads to show you how you can actually get the threads off and it is really really clever it is unique and I love it and it would be awesome if more more thread thread people could do that kind of thing um, because it, it makes life so much easier with um, not having to bobinate if, if bobinating really isn't your thing and that they're, uh, they're just wonderful so again this particular pattern it's free pattern um, so you'll need to go to the Cottage Garden Threads website um, to download the PDF and I strongly recommend that while you're on the Cottage Garden Threads website to purchase the threads as well um, the great thing is that you, you will just need one skein of each you won't need to to worry about purchasing extra threads just in case of um, the pattern saying one thing and then it actually finding out you need more um, so it, it is a wonderful project it, I'm loving how it's coming together okay two more projects to go so the next one I've been working on is a dimensions kit that I started back in 2019 as part of Stitch Mania so this one is called the Barnyard Kittens and so I'm attributing this particular project called uh, to a team called uh, the Geelong Cats um, with Geelong Cats their team colors are predominantly blue and white but cats come on um, I, I had this project I've had this project started for a while so um, it needs some love it really does and it's I'm using all of the the called for colors and fabric in the kit um, and this is where I'm at so far so with this project I've got an, oh, sorry need to turn over here we are so with this project I forgot to mention hang on Ooh. okay so sorry backtracking with this project uh, come on focus 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 there we go so I've done a touch over 300 stitches on this project so I just wanted to, to make note um, and with barnyard cats or barnyard kittens I have gotten 184 stitches done over the, the last couple of weeks and that's where we can see um, the, the ginger cat's leg and paw are starting to come together a bit and um, the other tabby or stripy cat is coming together as well um, and I think I do have some more stitching to do on that one um, I think Geelong are due to play today um, so that's why I don't have any more updates on what's going on for that project and last but not least the last pattern or the last project so the last project is um, that has gotten a lot of love is 12 days of Christmas so 12 days of Christmas it's out of the ultimate cross stitch Christmas um, magazine um, it is from the 2018 edition uh, volume 19 and 12 days of Christmas is designed by Rona Nori and the project recommends it to be stitched on uh, the 24 count um, navy even weave and I don't have um, the the navy blue or when I started stitching it I didn't have the navy blue fabric available so I'm still stitching it on roughly 25 or 28 count even weave I'm stitching it two over two and this is where I'm at so far so this particular project um, has and I haven't even written it down how clever of me I'm awesome so 
since we last caught up, um, I've done quite a lot of the backstitch just to get a bit of the outline and such um, around a lot of the swans and the milkmaids and the, the ballerina slippers. But in terms of the actual amount of stitching I've done on it, um, I need to do 121 stitches on it. I have for rounds three and four, I've done 315 stitches on this from round four. And then in round three, I had to do 308 stitches. So ultimately it's worked out to being 600, over 600 stitches, well and truly over. So I focus quite a lot on the crowns um, around number 10. And with 121 stitches, um, that's a lot to do with the Sydney Swans. So I've, um, I'm a supporter of the Sydney Swans and I also have the West Coast Eagles attributed to this project as well. And thankfully with the week that we're just, well, with round five, thankfully um, Sydney Swans played against West Coast Eagles and uh, so I only need to do one lot of stitching on this project for the week that, uh, for round five. Uh, I'm thankful for it. What I find tiring with this project is that um, it has a lot of fractional stitches in it. And the, the fractional stitches are there for a reason. I definitely appreciate. I don't do fractional stitches often enough to say how much I love them or detest them. Um, I just find them annoying. That's probably the better way to put it. I just find them annoying and I'll avoid doing fractional stitches if I can get away with it. Um, so with that in mind, it's all, I'm stitching this all on uh, DMC threads, stitching this two over two and the full picture. Oh, so it'll stretch out a fair bit. So I started in the center. I, I found starting in the center a lot easier um, than uh, I guess starting anywhere else. And yeah, it'll come together. I think aside from the fractional stitches, the one thing I'm not looking forward to is the gold thread. That is going to be a pain in the flipping neck. Um, <laughs> to put that into perspective, um, yeah, just that's the border that we see, the rectangular border. That's backstitch, and that is using the metallic gold thread. Um, so I could use Krynic. I could use the DMC metallic. Both are annoying. I have used both. Um, so the gold does give a beautiful edge to the projects. Um, I could, I could do a few different things to avoid using the, um, the metallic thread. Um, I'll wait and see, I'll wait and see how things go, but yeah, thankfully I've, I've got a while to go for that one. Um, but if swans keep playing the way that they do, um, yeah, it'll, it'll come along quite well. I'll, I could get it finished this year but also the other team that's attributed to this is um, a team called St Kilda um, so they're called the St Kilda Saints and so given religion having saints deities and gods and other other similar um, things that people pray to um, and this 12 days of Christmas being at least I attribute to um, to a, to religions that celebrate Christmas. Um, yeah, that's why the, the saints are connected to this one. So that's that's pretty much it for, uh, for the stitching. And I think I've done all good. After this, this has been my, my third time of recording this particular episode and I've been able to cut it down a fair bit for, for talking and that kind of thing. So now that I finished sharing with you stitching and stuff, 
I do have a bit of life update stuff to share with you. So if by chance you're not interested in, in life update stuff or anything like that, but you still want to see more about my stitching and that kind of thing, make sure you click the like button, um, subscribe and click on the, the bell icon as well. So that way you can continue to get uh, the notifications for um, for when I next release any of um, any new any new content Cool, so if I'm saying goodbye to you now, I'll see you all later But if you're sticking around for the the life update stuff Let's get to it So I have actually started to get back into a bit more running um, And I feel really really hopeful and excited about it where my my right foot for a while has has been uncomfortable when it comes to running especially and um, sometimes walking um, especially on certain certain terrain or certain inclines and and that kind of thing and my goal is to be able to run the 5k fun run pardon me the 5k fun run for the gold coast airport fun run um, that event is part of the Gold Coast Marathon that uh, covers, and there's other just dis running distances um, as well for the event, and it covers the 2nd and 3rd of July. So it's up on Queensland, it's up at, uh, <laughs> words, <laughs> it is up at the Gold Coast, and I was all ready to participate in the fun run last year, and then the event got cancelled, there were political things going on that were making life uncomfortable and uncertain about how much of a comfortable holiday uh, we would have up there. Um, so yeah, we decided not to go on that holiday. And so this year, the event looks like it's actually going to happen. Um, I am hoping nothing goes wrong and I'm, I'm just so excited about being able to run again because I went to the gym this morning and I ran two kilometers on the treadmill and that for me is, is a big deal because I haven't been able to run that distance for a while, um, especially without um, major discomfort. So my foot did let me know every so often um, that it was just a little bit uncomfortable with what I was doing. But what I am so happy about as well is that my fitness hasn't really dropped off too much um, because I've still been going to the gym and um, doing other exercises and that kind of thing. And sometimes my running fitness can drop off in terms of breathing and how the muscles react and such, but it's going okay so far. So, so touch wood it'll be okay. Um, so that's, yeah, the main, main life stuff that I wanted to, to share with you. And I guess the other thing is I've got a few designs up my sleeve that are very close to being released. So I do need to make some final touches for the, the patterns, um, before I'm comfortable with uploading them to the hot cross stitching website. And I'll definitely be letting you all know, when those patterns are up and available for purchase, um, I'll, you guys will know. I'll, I'll definitely be trying to uh, scream it for the from the mountaintops, so to speak, or, or scream it from the rooftops to, to say that the, the patterns are available for purchase. So hang around for that. And I need to find my mouse. <sighs> so, sorry, I had a slightly different setup. It's all good but I will catch you all later. <laughs> See you.